Hi there, greetings. I'm David Santana, and for those that are unfamiliar with my work, I have spent most of my academic career working in natural history museums. And four years ago, I collected my first environmental DNA sample during an expedition to survey the fish fauna of a remote area in Amazon Basin. Uh, the primary mission of natural history museums is to obtain and preserve biological samples for generations. That is, then, these samples uh, can be studied by future generations employ up-to-date technology, even when environments where the samples were collected are gone. Likewise, in the light of the first 21st century of biodiversity crisis, natural history museums are in the front line to engage the society and create a spokesperson for the planet. Have this in mind, a few months ago, using Amazonian fishes as a study case, I led a paper on how natural history museums can boost the use of eDNA metabar coding as a tool for biodiversity studies in face of the face, uh, fast-paced uh, degrading planet. So today I will talk about the mega diversity of natural cold freshwater fishes from a drop of water and how I think that we should move forward in the race against the time to survey hotspots of biodiversity before they disappear and why natural history museums play a crucial role on that. For millions of years, rainforest vast size, equatorial location, landscape evolution, niche diversity, and stable polyclimatic conditions play a crucial role in the evolution and conservation of about 50% of all living fish species. However, with 35% of wilderness left in the planet and occupying only 0.01% of the Earth's surface, freshwater ecosystems are under unprecedented pressure because of the progenic actions. Such as mine, here you can see a uh, Peruvian river completely destroyed by uh, mining. Uh, construction of uh, hydroelectric dams in rapids, as you, as you can see here in, in Belo Monte, in the Chimu River in Brazil. Land grabbing, deforestation for logging, growing of monoculture, cattle ranching, and of course climate change. So at the current pace of this destruction, most of the rainforest as, and consequently freshwater hotspots of biodiversity as we know them today will be gone between our lifetimes. So the neutral cohesion is, the, is home for more than one-third of all fishy species known to science and a countless number of species still undiscovered in the vast and yet unexplored regions of the Amazon basin. In an area equivalent to two-thirds of the continental U.S., with more than 1,100 white, black, and clear water rivers, this region maintains the most diverse river in each of fauna on Earth, with more than 2,700 species classified in 18 orders and 60 families. Tetras, catfishes and electric fishes, the autophytes are primary fresh, freshwater fishes, that is, uh, they show little or no tolerance to salt water and represent more than 75% of the fish diversity in the region. Also part of this fauna are fishes uh, that evolved from marine ancestors and now are tied to freshwaters, such as anchovies, pufferfish, and stingrays. The origin of this fauna dates to 120 to 150 million years before the present. In contrast, most of species level diversification is hypothesized to have occurred relatively recently, less than 10 million years before the present. Over time, Amazonian fish fauna has specified to live in a diverse set of environments. As a result, each of, uh, of the four main types of aquatic ecosystems, as you can see here, are occupied by unique fish assemblage. The lowland fish community uh, is characterized for uh, fish that live in large full plain rivers, as you can see here. The deep fish, uh, deep water fish community. Uh, there are uh, there are fish living in the deep water channel uh, of large rivers, characterized by the absence of light and strong current. Um, here uh, you are going to see here now. You can see a black catfish at 18 meters deep in their quarantine river in Suriname. The terra firma uh, fish community. Um, there are fish restricted to life in the streams of no flooded forests. Here you can see the Corgat Fish School. And 
again, rapids love in fishes or fishes that are associated with rapids and waterfalls. As you can see here, the head standers and papu swim, swim in the um, Cachoeira do Espelho in the Xingu River. An example of the most unlimited opportunities for new finds in Amazon is the breathtaking discovery that the let eel is three different species, including electrophilus voltaic, capable of producing over 800 volts of electricity, and can even hunt in groups as do uh, wolves and killer whales. So to know more about this shocking find, please scan your QR, the QR code in your screen. So with so much that's still unknown, and with the current pace of destruction, there is a profound sense of urgency to accelerate assessment in hotspot of biodiversity. So historically, ecological surveys in freshwater were conducted with whole specimen, capture-based sampling using conventional fishing approaches uh, such as sea nets. As you can see here, uh, that was during the expedition to the Branco River. Trawl nets and hand nets. As you can see here, uh, we're trawling in the Oyapok River. Uh, you can also see the amount of fish that you can capture during the trawling. Those are specimens of uh, uh, a electric fish, um, Adontus enatus balaenops. Also, spear fishing. Here you can see a seven foot long eel or 2.10 meter long let eel being captured in the Javari River by Hobeval Ribeiro. And rotenone, the chemical version of the natural fish poison timbo, a toxic vine that reduces the, the concentration of oxygen in the water, uh, which has been uh, used for century, centuries by indigenous population in the tropics, and as you can see here in the Copenhagen River in Suriname. Uh, however, uh, rotenone has been banned because it's extraordinary power to kill fish and associate fauna. So capture-based methods, other than rotenone, are less powerful, especially for uh, collecting small cryptobank species. Moreover, all traditional methods uh, may result in low capture rates in hard-to-sample environments such as rapids and waterfalls. Yet, by undersampling, we increase the likelihood of our overlooking. Conversely, emerging at the same pace as the 21st century biodiversity crisis is the environmental DNA, an ecological friendly, non-invasive and practical approach that captures genetic material for environmental samples and uses short, variable and standardized DNA regions to recognize multiple species of organisms present in these samples. eDNA has emerged as a complementary and possible alternative approach uh, to repeated whole specimen capture methods. Thus, by using a uniform methodology as for instance my fish 12S primers and the fine species threshold. This new technology has occasionally been tested to inventory and or screen numerous aquatic environments as a complement to the traditional whole specimen based approach and sometimes has successfully been employed as a solid methodology in biodiversity studies in temperate regions where most of the uh, diversity is known. However, in highly diverse heterogeneous um, freshwater habitats like those in South America, where factors such as the lack of refer reference libraries for 12S, recent speciation, meaning less than 10 million years before the present, and an extraordinary number of undescribed species play a crucial role on accurate nominal species identification, few attempts to use eDNA in biodiversity studies have been made. Although limited, these attempts raised several questions about whether the standardized eDNA approach could be enough to portray and understand the complexity of high diverse ecosystem and the associated fish community. 
Despite the problems found in progress of new methodologies, eDNA technology and associated bioinformatics are evolving at accelerated rates and will soon play a central role in the inventory of fish diversity. In contrast, freshwater ecosystems, many of which are unexplored, are under severe and fast-paced uh, threats. Consequently, the, ne the next decade or so will be pivotal to survey those habitats and to secure vouchers, DNA, and the e DNA samples to build reference libraries and archive the samples, as well as to engage the society to protect these environments as they reach the, the tip point. Having that in mind, in 2007, I contacted one of the pioneers in the eDNA metabolic coding for biodiversity studies, Dr. Mazaki Mia. I share my idea of including eDNA as a tool for uh, helping survey the Amazon remote rivers and use those th these expeditions to build vulture-based eDNA libraries. Mazak was uh, really uh, quite receptive and uh, we promptly uh, started collaborating. So, in the last four years, I have been leading an international team of scientists in an ongoing project between Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History and the Museo de Zoologia da Universidade de São Paulo that, among other things, uh, is serving uh, the fish fauna of remote rivers in the Amazon. Since then, during the scientific expeditions, we are linking the gap between the traditional biological service surveys and new non-invasive genetic approach. We are, we are also employing new technologies such as, such as underwater and aerial drones and in addition to action cameras to explore, survey and docu document the, the expeditions. So far we have conducted four major expeditions. Uh, in 2007, I was invited by Dr. Gislene Villara from the Universidade Federal de São Paulo to be part of a team of ichthyologists to inventory uh, the remote Java River basin in Brazil, Colombia, and Peru border. In 2018, Rafael Coven from the Natural uh, History Museum in Geneva and I led an international uh, expedition uh, that crossed the, crossed the Suriname sampling the Quarantine, the Copenham, and Suriname rivers. We collected over 200 fish species, uh, eDNA, and more than 2,000 uh, tissue samples. In 2019, we went to the Upper Branco, the Jatapu, and the Taktu rivers near the border between Brazil and Guiana. We collected uh, over uh, 200 species, eDNA, and more than 800 tissue samples. Also in 2019, I led an international expedition to the Oyapok River in the border between Brazil and French Guiana. Uh, we collected more than 200 fish species, over 760 tissue samples, and of course environmental DNA. As a result of, results of those uh, four expeditions, we co collected over 600 fish species, uh, where about 15% uh, are new to science, and more than 4,000 tissue samples, and dozens of uh, eDNA samples. So, after spending most of my academic life working at natural history museums, I think that several flaws and gaps on eDNA metaphor coding for biodiversity studies are routine to practice uh, in, the, in, in these um, natural history institutions. Likewise, eDNA has the potential to meet all priorities of natural history museums in the 21st century, uh, meaning uh, priority for collections, research, training, and outreach. As a concrete example of what I'm saying, my colleagues and I tested the discriminatory power of the MyFish primers using uh, an existing uh, uh, public reference library by serving two distinct ecosystems, river and stream, during the 2017 scientific expedition to the largely unexplored Java River Basin. As, resu as results, uh, we created a collection-based protocol that will improve the use of eDNA metabar code as a tool for biodiversity studies in highly diverse freshwater, freshwater ecosystems. Uh, please scan the QR code uh, to assess uh, our study. So the Javari River was that was our first attempt to use eDNA in large scale uh, uh, fish inventories in South America. So for you all have an idea. In 18 days on board of a, a research vessel, we surveyed 46 stations in multiple uh, environments, such as beaches, streams, and river channels. 
we also collected over 600, 700 fish tissue samples and made the observation on natural history of fillet eel. Here you're going to see uh, Douglas Bosch's uh, that back then was a P my PhD student working naturally for natural history of lat gills. In total, using the traditional methodology, we collected 443 species classified into uh, 236 genera, 49 families, and 15 orders. Among these species, over 60 species uh, were new to science. So to compare eDNA with the traditional methodology, we sample two distinct ecosystems, the Tehafim stream and the Javai and the Kishito River. The employment methodology is described by the Santana Collaborators 2021 and referenced therein. However, I will describe here uh, the methodology that we use to collect the environmental samples just so you have an idea how simple it can be. So all the pictures here are merely, merely uh, illustrative. So we use it at 10 liter bucket fastened to a five uh, meter rope to collect five liters of fresh water. On site filtration kits consisted on the filter cartridge and a five, uh, 50 uh, milliliter disposable syringe. We draw about 50 milliliters of fresh water into this, uh, the, the syringe and repeated this uh, uh, step twice so that the final filtration volume reached 100 ml. After on-site filtration, we sealed the, an outlet port with the filter of the filter with a parafilm and added two milliliters of uh, RNA later with disposable capillary uh, pipette uh, to prevent DNA degradation. Then we sealed the inlet port with parafilm. Moreover, each locality a blanket sample was collected. Here uh, in the cladogram in your left, you can see the results of the 11 eDNA libraries. In station one, five libraries. In station two, five libraries. In station three, one library. Uh, it produced um, 222 molecular taxonomic unit, units or motus, and that we classify it into 222 species belong to 104 genera, 41 family, and nine order of fishes. For the most of species orders detected by eDNA, ciliary forms uh, or catfish represented uh, by 36.3% of the species. Uh, the carcids or charis forms represented 27.1%. Cichlids forms or cichlids represent 11.7%. And electric fish or gymnot, gymnot forms represent 10.8%. In the core diagram in your right, uh, you can see the directional relationship between the habitat and the species richness distributed into the nine detected orders. As we saw, uh, Amazonian aquatic environments are characterized by specialized fish communities. Even with our low DNA sampling and the low detection of nominal species, that is, species identified at or above 98.5% of accuracy, this methodology showed to be capable to distinguish between river and stream fish communities. So to assess whether uh, the difference in species composition between stream and river communities detected in the person uh, correlation coefficient were real, you can see here in your left, we calculated your card similarity indices uh, through a non-metric multidimensional scaling or NMDS analysis. Basically what we do is that we use a dissimilarity metrics to rank the species per habitat. Thus, uh, the original position of the 222 detected species in river, stream, and in both habitats were plotted in a three-dimensional space, as you can see in your left. So this, this stress equal to 0.0524 in the plot indicated that its first three axes provided an appropriate three-dimensional representation of the habitats according to daily uh, species composition. As you can see here in this figure comparing the traditional and the eDNA sampling in our study, the eDNA was able to capture and correctly identify most of the orders. In contrast, it's correctly assigned nominal species to only 26% or 58 species detected by eDNA. In addition to the absence of a, of a, a uh, robust 
uh, to our best library for Amazonian fish in public libraries and the absence of a specific library for the Java River fishes uh, or the specific issues, issues such as the low sampling effort in the stream, uh, the diffic difficulty uh, uh, to sample uh, the crypto bank habitats and hidden species of uh, uh, diversity and lack of appropriate threshold for a taxonomic assignment in Amazonian fish could have contributed to the low overlap between eDNA and traditional methodology in our study. Combining specimens, DNA sampling, and taxonomic identification is a basic requirement to get a comprehensive assessment of the biodiversity. Yet, DNA samples are available for fewer than 10% of the specimens found in most fish repositories. Well identified vulture DNA tissue samples are critical for the, the identification of unknown DNA environmental samples. Thus, natural history museums could advance the effective use of eDNA in biodiversity studies by expanding their archive to include environmental samples prioritizing expeditions to uh, Earth's hotspot of biodiversity to collect vouchers, DNA, and eDNA, expanding and improving their genetic banks, creating reference libraries for mitochondrial DNA based on, on species level in identify voucher specimens, refining public platforms to close gaps in sampling information, training students and researchers to use traditional and molecular-based molecular sampling and identification methodologies, and using eDNA research as a gateway to inspire and engage the society in natural history and in the race against the time to serve and protect Earth's hotspot of biodiversity to education and outreach. A really cool and prompt uh, response to the Decent and Collaborators 2021 uh, uh, protocol was the expansion of the Museo de Zoologia da Universidade de São Paulo. Uh, bio repository to include environmental samples. The MSUSP became the first museum in Latin America and probably in the world to provide accession numbers for fish DNA captured by eDNA. Likewise, um, the National Museum of Natural History will soon build the eDNA collection as a part of its five year uh, strategic plan. So the, the concrete actions are taken by the MZUSP, the largest natural history museum in Latin America, and by the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, uh, the largest of its kind in the, the planet, show that those institutions are open to embrace new technologies in order to fight in the front line against the 21st century biodiversity crisis and find in, also to find new ways to engage the society in this battle. So as next steps, we are working to build an effective eDNA collection based approach uh, for serving highly diverse freshwater environments, uh, creating a voucher eDNA fish collection for African and South American fishes and building an eDNA outreach program. So thank you all and thank you uh, to my colleagues, to the GGI, to the FAPSB and to the, the Smithsonian uh, Institution. I see you next time.